Hey friend, in this tutorial, I'm showing you how I come about my color palettes and color mixing for my floral watercolor pieces. So it may be a little different than you might expect. I do use a reference photo or a reference subject, but if you're really struggling with mixing colors, how to combine certain colors together to get the right color that maybe you find in a photo or a reference subject, then this tutorial is for you. Let's dive in. I'm going to cover my process for mixing colors. So first things first, reference photo or reference material. Your reference material can be a real life subject like a bouquet of flowers or some stems of flowers that you picked yourself, whatever, or an inspiration photo. So the inspiration photo or reference photo can be again, a photo of a flower bouquet that you're painting in referencing for colors and for the actual flowers. For me though, I feel very comfortable with painting flowers from my imagination because I paint from basic shapes and break it down with petals, petal shapes, which is what I showed you in these previous lessons. But I'm gonna be using this photo, um, Sonora Art Village that I found on Pinterest. I love the colors in this photo. We have a lot of bright lime, limeish greens in the cactus and then some like, whoops, ooh, some softer eucalyptus color bluish green in the agave plant. There's orange, oh my goodness, some bright orange, some bright canary yellow. And then there's some softer cobalts and softer pinks in the background that I love. I might incorporate that purple in the background. Hey yo, that's a pinky based purple and then some deeper cobalt. So with this as my reference photo, I'm gonna just spend the next few minutes mixing up these colors. So um, I'm gonna grab my size six brush and obviously with my palette, it's very messy and I like that. If I'm going to mix up um, colors that I know would work well with a base of purple or a base of red, then I'll go on top of that. Um, but for the sake of making these colors really clean and vibrant, I'm gonna use this little dish that I have that doesn't have much color on it. So I'm just gonna use it for mixing up my colors. So let's start with this orange here. It's a very red um, tinted orange. Think about the color wheel. We're thinking about secondary and tertiary colors. So what undertone or bias does this orange have? It definitely has an undertone of red. So I have some red here. So I have some red here and we also wanna think about the mood or the saturation of the color. So is the saturation more vibrant? Is it leaning towards really vibrant or is it leaning towards muted? All of these colors on here are gonna be really vibrant leaning. So we don't have, um, you know, we're gonna have Scarlet Lake mixed with cadmium orange for our red or for our red orange instead of Scarlet Lake, um, burnt umber and orange, which is gonna make it a more burnt orange look. So we want really clean, really vibrant colors. We've got Scarlet Lake, and we're just gonna add a touch of cadmium orange to that. And that looks a little too orange. Grab a touch of Scarlet Lake and then testing out the colors. I'm gonna come up here and test out my swatches on paper. So this is super helpful to do because then you can see all the colors lined up and see how they cooperate with one another. And color usually looks slightly different on paper than it does in your palette. So I want a deeper red orange as well. So I added a couple more touches of Scarlet Lake to that. And we can have a lighter version of it by just lightening the mixture with water. And then we come up here, we have some pretty just plain orange vibe. So I'm gonna just grab a couple dips of Scarlet Lake to deepen that orange a little bit, make it a little bit more red, but not too close to my red orange. 
for that. And we can lighten that as well with water. So far, everything is working very well together and in an analogous color palette, we're combining red, orange, orange, and then, then yellow, orange, and yellow for a peaceful transition for people's eyes for our colors. Because if they're sitting right next to each other on a color wheel, they're neighbors. They are next door neighbors, so they're not jumping across from each other on the color wheel to create more contrast. It's a very peaceful transition, easy transition for people's eyes to look through. So this canary yellow, uh, lemon yellow deep has an orangey reddish undertone to it already, but this canary yellow has a little bit of blue tint to it. It's cleaner looking than just this like brownish orangey yellow. So I'm gonna add um, some, just a touch of phthalo turquoise. I also have this lemon yellow deep right here that is what I mix phthalo turquoise with or cobalt turquoise with. And so I'm just gonna grab that, just a touch of it, and mix it in. So, oh, well now I grabbed orange, so we're gonna have to do that again. So it just makes it kind of zaps that orange undertone, it like erases that. What is that word? Negates. Mm -hmm. Is that the word? Yes. Negates that. Just, mm, we want a clean yellow. Still a warm yellow, but you know, you get it. Maybe a little more yellow to brighten it, clean it up a little bit. There we go. Bright, bright canary yellow. And so we've got our red orange here, lighter, and then our orange orange, our yellow. Let's move into the lime green. Oh, I need to lay down my swatch. Very nice, love that yellow, it's beautiful. And now let's move the on the cool side of yellow for these lime green colors. So, phthalo tur cobalt turquoise. Manganese blue. Manganese blue. No, this is cobalt turquoise. Okay. <laughs> cobalt turquoise and lemon yellow deep. Um, if I want a bright lime yellow, lemon yellow green, lime green, lime yellow. Struggles. <laughs> like a chartreuse color, I'm gonna use cobalt turquoise and lemon yellow deep because that cobalt turquoise, that turquoise element um, mixed with yellow just makes the chart, it just makes it that neon color. But if I were to mix Prussian blue and yellow, another blue, but just a darker, richer blue, then I would get more of these green, sagey undertones in the yellow green, it wouldn't be chartreuse. So I'm gonna use Cobalt turquoise instead of Prussian blue or cobalt blue. Cobalt blue, when I mix with yellow, is more muted, so it's a softer um, color. So I'm going to use phthalo turquoise. Nope, cobalt, <laughs> cobalt turquoise. <laughs> <laughs> and lemon yellow deep. I want it to be a little more yellow. So let's come over here. And boom. I usually have my colors mixed up a little bit ahead of time before I start painting a full floral piece. So I have them for painting quickly, but even throughout the painting, I'm mixing colors and I'm adding new colors. So this is just to get started. So there's my chartreuse, chartreuse lime green. And we can lighten that with water. We got that. Now I wanna get in this like agave color, which is going to be some cobalt turquoise mixed with brown and a lot of water. So brown, has a little bit, 
a little touch of red to it. This is a red bias brown. Phthalo turquoise has a green undertone. So red and green are contrasting colors. So it's making for a muted color, a smoky, sagey color. A little bit more. Why won't you let me zoom on that particular color? Get out of here. Okay. There, that's nice. So smoky blue to contrast the oranges because orange and blue are contrasting colors. And then I love this like Easter egg blue and Easter egg pink, pale pink, springy colors. So we're gonna do cobalt. Cobalt blue is a nice baby blue, but it's a bit richer. So we're gonna add, if you have white gouache on hand, that's perfect for that springy vibe. I have a little bit left over up here that I'm just snagging. Hopefully I have enough, but you can also lighten your blue with water, your cobalt with water, but that's pretty bomb right there. Yep. I need a little more cobalt. and pink. So a pale, pale pink, opera rose and white gouache. I have it up here. Let's create some space somewhere. There we go. Beautiful color palette. So that is my approach for mixing colors. Again, usually with a reference photo, photo of either the subject that I'm actually painting, but usually it's of something that is inspirational for the colors. The reason is the color. So it doesn't matter what it is. It could be buildings. It could be an ocean, a photo of an ocean, a photo of a car, a photo of literally anything, as long as the colors are speaking to me and I really want to use them and they make sense in the context of what I'm painting. So I'm painting flowers today. And this definitely makes sense for that context. So that is how I mix up colors. And you wanna remember, again, studying color theory. So we'll link to the videos that I've done on my YouTube channel where I talk about color mixing. I've done a color study video and some color theory lessons as well. Um, but you wanna think about what is the overall undertone or bias of the color. So we're going for vibrant or um, less vibrant or muted. So for this color palette, we were leaning towards vibrant and then we had softer colors. This isn't muted, that's just softer. So it's not like a brown or a black undertone, it's just muted um, and more pastel. So these were white. White is gonna make it more pastel or adding more water if you don't have white gouache to make it a lighter version. And um, making sure that our greens and our bright yellows stayed really vibrant by adding in touches of cobalt turquoise, cobalt turquoise even here to lemon yellow deep, but just a very small touch so that it stayed vibrant and not too warm. And then again, mixing up our red oranges with Scarlet Lake and cadmium orange and all of that. So now that I have this color palette, I'm ready to paint my full floral piece. So the next lesson I'm going to focus on floral composition and how to know where to paint what for your full floral composition. Okie dokie, so I'm gonna move my reference photo over. So I've got my reference photo moved to the side. I'm gonna use a clean sheet. This is gonna turn into scrap practice paper for another thing. But you can tear off your color swatch to have as like a little bookmark or reference of your colors that you're using. So I'm gonna have that nearby. Thank you so much for watching. This was just one part of the full length tutorial that we put together called the Complete Beginner's Guide to Watercolor Flowers, where I cover sketching flowers, sketching leaves from basic shapes and curves, painting basic flowers and their basic strokes for petals, painting basic leaves from compound strokes, pressure and release, painting an anemone star-shaped flower, painting delphinium, painting an iris flower with watercolor, color mixing using reference photos and how to achieve certain colors with color mixing and also 
a full floral composition for a floral bouquet and watercolor. So make sure you check out that full length tutorial. If you liked this video, please, please, please make sure you like and subscribe to our channel, like this video, subscribe to our channel and comment below with what your favorite takeaway was from this video. And I hope to see you in the next one.